morning, everyone. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Good to see everybody this morning. The tenth Sunday after Pentecost. So apparently a good day for some summer showers, which we def definitely need them though. So that's good. Um, this morning, uh, one of the most famous probably Bible stories: Peter walking on water, or at least walking for a few steps. And I often wonder if Jesus called me to get out of the boat, would I get out and walk on water? Yet he calls each of us out of the boat every day as we live our lives and, and walk amongst the world. And, and so this, this story, while it seems like Peter may be failing and Jesus saving him, it's actually our story too as we live in this world. So and we will get to that in the sermon. But uh, before we begin, a couple of announcements before uh, we start. Um, help wanted, we are needing a couple people who would like to help with dusting uh, and cleaning the windows. And also we could use someone who would clean, wash, and stock the quiet bags. And, and if you would like to do one of those things, uh, please get a hold of Kathy Schaefer. And uh, this evening, our third, third week of VBS, um, the theme is a new heaven and a new earth. And kickoff will be at 6 p.m. And uh, also next Sunday then is the closing celebration. And, and uh, so we look forward to that. Um, birthdays this week are Mark Holliday, Ann Knudsen, Lily Meir, Leif Hansi, Alexander Zanowski, and Holly Grimm. And so a happy birthday to everyone uh, this week. And I think that's it. Why don't we begin the service with our first hymn?
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us humble ourselves before God, confess our sins to Him, and ask His gracious forgiveness. We confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and before one another that we are sinful human beings by nature and by need. We have not always put God first. We have used his holy name in ways that do not honor him. We have not always been thoughtful caretakers of his creation and have not shared his bounty with others at all times. We have been heedless in word and deed, and have not always kept our thoughts, words, and deeds pure and honorable. We sin in many ways we know, and in ways we do not even recognize. We have wished for that which is not rightfully ours, and have not put the best construction on all things and on all people. We pray God to have mercy on us, to forgive us all our sins, and to bring us to everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all our sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Psalm of the day is Psalm 18, and we begin by speaking together. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. The cords of death encompassed me, the cords of destruction assailed me. The cords of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I cried for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. And my cry to him reached his ears. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, preserve us from all harm and danger, that we, being ready in both body and soul, may cheerfully accomplish what you want done. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land, beaten by the waves, for the wind was against them. And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified and said, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us now worship the Lord together by confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for the hymn.
Grace, mercy, and peace be yours in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. When I was in the military, we liked to uh, jokingly make fun of the other branches, and, and we learned, though, as time went on, you learned to appreciate the other branches of the military for what they had to offer, but the Marines jokingly liked to say that the Army and Navy and Air Force were just the taxi cabs for the real military branch. And uh, But we didn't need them to get us where we were going, and, and we learned to appreciate them, as I said. You know, in the same way, brothers and sisters, the church has often been compared to a ship or a taxi cab, as it were. In fact, this area that we're in, in the, the sanctuary, is also called the nave. And if you've ever been in an old, older church building, and I think even some newer ones are building that way again, when you walk inside and look up, it looks like the bottom of a ship up on top, and you can see the girders and the beams that would actually hold a ship together. Most of those are pretty neat looking when you realize what they're meant to look like. The Latin word that we get nave, that's a Latin word which means ship, and, and it's used for a reason. And ships are useful because they take you on journeys. They get you where you need to go. And for us Christians, the church is the ship, and it takes us through this journey that we call life. The church is our ship, and I guess you could say that the Holy Spirit is both our crew and our director. And this boat, this church, is very helpful and it's very needed. After all, it is here in the ship that we receive the training and help that we need. It is here where we worship our Lord and Savior. It is here where we learn God's word and we grow in wisdom and knowledge. And it is here where we come when we need patched up, when life gets us down. Because it is only here in church that we receive the gifts, the sacraments of our Lord. Now, when you reach the destination that you're going, you can't stay in the boat. You have to get out. You have to get the job done that you've been called to do. You have to get that mission accomplished. Our mission as Christians is not to stay in the ship, not to hide inside the boat. We must get out and go to where Christ is calling us. The mission for us here at Eternal Hope is to lead people to become fully devoted followers of Christ to help them know who Jesus Christ is. And we do this by fulfilling the commands of Christ. In our gospel lesson for this morning, Peter tried to obey Jesus, but he ended up sinking and, and almost drowning. If Jesus had not have been there, he would have drowned. And all of us do the same thing from time to time, don't we? Or at least maybe it feels that way as life hits us. We want to follow Jesus' commands. We try to follow his commands. But instead, so many times it feels like we blow it and, and we're starting to sink. It feels like the storms of life are more than we can handle. The wind and the waves of life just keep knocking us down. Did you notice in this morning's gospel lesson, it was Jesus who sent the disciples out on the lake alone? It was he who sent them out as that storm was approaching. The disciples couldn't see it because of the hills in the region. But Jesus knew one was coming. So why? Why would Jesus send his disciples out knowing a full-blown storm was coming their way? A storm that was brewing and threatening to sink their boat and drown all of them. It's a good Lutheran question, isn't it? What does this mean? Why would Jesus do this? You see, brothers and sisters, all of us here this morning are in the, the midst of a huge storm that threatens to capsize our salvation and destroy us if we don't have the proper help. There is a battle raging all around us, even if we don't realize it, and it wants to destroy the hope of eternal life for people all around the world. It wants to destroy the hope for the families that are moving into our area, for our co-workers, for our neighbors, for our friends, and even for our loved ones. But in the midst of this global storm, of this hurricane, maybe even we can use the word pandemic, we have nothing to fear, brothers and sisters. You see, there is someone who has seen the storm coming and has already made preparations to keep us safe. Our gospel lesson for this morning, if we look at it, we can see three key things about the storms of life. 
Number one, the Lord knows what kind of storms you are going through right now. You notice in verse 23 that what Jesus did right after he sent the disciples out in that boat all by themselves. Verse 23 tells us that after he dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. You see, brothers and sisters in Christ, no matter what course in life Jesus has sent you out on, he is praying for you to make it safely. Hebrews 7, 25 tells us that Jesus is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede with prayer for us. God knows your needs, brothers and sisters. In fact, in Isaiah 65, 24, God tells us, I will answer them before they even call to me. While they are still talking to me about their needs, I will go ahead and answer their prayers. You see, brothers and sisters, God is with you even when the storms of life are so intense that you can't see anything else but the storm you're in. Secondly, we see that the Lord's help is always on time. I've got written in one of my little pocket Bibles that the Lord is never early, but he's always on time. I heard that in a sermon when I was in college, and it's always stuck with me. And we see that here with Peter and the disciples, don't we? That the Lord's help is always on time. In verses 26 and 27, Scripture tells us that when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Have you ever wondered why the Lord seems to take so long to answer our prayers? Do you remember Lazarus? Even after hearing that he was sick and near death, Jesus waited two more days before he went to him. And we all know that by that time, Lazarus was already dead. And I'm sure Lazarus prayed for help up until he died. So why? Why would Jesus take so long to answer a man that was dying? And the answer is so that God could be glorified in his life, just as God wants to be glorified in your life and my life. Many times in our own lives, it seems like Jesus is taking way too long to answer our prayers. Sometimes we might even feel like death would be a better option than what we're going through right now. But brothers and sisters, if Jesus is delaying his answer, we can be sure that it is for our best and also for God's best that he delays that answer. The third thing we can draw this morning is that the Lord, the Lord allows storms to come into our lives so that we can grow in our faith and trust of him. Verses 28 and 29, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Why would you ask that question? Why would anybody test the Lord like that? So what did Jesus do? He said, come. He tested him. He let him have his answer. He, then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. You see, brothers and sisters, God will never give us the answer sheet to the test that we're going through in life. But he does give us his peace to take the test of life and to go through life's storms. Let's face it, all of us have storms that beat and batter our lives. But all of these storms are meant to make us stronger if we trust in Christ. The storms of life are meant to draw us closer in our relationship with our Heavenly Father so that eventually we no longer see the storms of life. We just see our Father and our Savior. And we know Jesus is praying for us. You know, there is one person who went through the worst storms of life this world ever could offer. And those storms weren't meant to make him stronger. Those storms were meant to save you and me from the storms of our lives. Jesus went through every storm the devil could throw at him. He went through the storms of a whipping and a beating that were so brutal most men died from those beatings. And he went through the horrors of the crucifixion on a cross. And he did die so that you don't have to die. Jesus even suffered the punishment of death and hell itself so that you could live forever 
with him in heaven. So take a moment right now and think about the sins in your life that have caused Jesus to suffer as he did. Now, think about the storms in your own life that are not meant to hurt you, but are meant to make you stronger and grow closer to Jesus. That's what most of them are, isn't it? So get out of the boat, brothers and sisters. There is nothing to fear in this life. No storm, no, no pandemic, nothing can make you fear in this life. Jesus is calling all of us to get out of the boat and to bring others back to the boat, the church, so that they too can be saved from sin and eternal damnation. God has given you everything you need to pull others in to this lifeboat. So get out of the boat and go. In Jesus' name, go. Amen. It is now time for our morning prayers as we go to the Lord. Please rise with me. O oh Lord our God, we do not presume to know your ways or inform your judgment. We ask you to grant us your Holy Spirit so that we may more fully know your ways and know your Son, Jesus Christ, by faith. Give us wisdom that we may trust in your word amid the stormy seas of this mortal life and be safely delivered from all danger unto the eternal shores of heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, we have no righteousness of our own, but the only the righteousness of Christ into which we were clothed in baptism. Grant us grace that we may be faithful in every circumstance and bold in the confession of his saving name. Guard those who preach your word to us so that hearing we may believe and believing we may have the everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, we ask you to bless us, our nation, and those who lead us. Guide all elected and appointed civil servants in their judgments that we may know justice in our land and peace among the nations. Make us especially mindful of those who need our special protection, the unborn, the aged, and the oppressed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, we remember the sick, those who suffer, those troubled in mind, the grieving and the dying. Deliver them all according to your will and grant them the comfort of your word in their afflictions that they may depend upon your mercy in every circumstance. Hear us especially as we pray this morning for Anne and also for all those that we now name before you in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, we give thanks for the saints of old who trusted, in, who trusted in you in life and now rest in Christ from all their labors. Deliver us from all evil and lead us through all temptations so that at last we may join them in the marriage supper of the Lamb in your kingdom without end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, we pray you to be our light in darkness, our strength in weakness, our courage and fear, and our peace and distress. Speak to us by the voice of your word, that we may call upon you in the day of trouble and confess your saving name before all people. Hear us on behalf of ourselves and those for whom we have prayed. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives, lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.